Hello and welcome viewers, you are watching the special presentation of Sunset TV on major constitutional amendments. The constitution is the supreme law of the land, made to protect basic fundamental rights, establish a responsible government, define powers and functions of the organs of the government. At independence, India was large and diverse. Our constitution was designed to keep the country together and to take it forward. The framers of our constitution knew that due to dynamic situation, constitution also needed to be amended with the changing requirements and needs. The Constitution of India is a distinctive document with many extraordinary features. It is the longest written constitution of any sovereign nation in the world. The original text contained 395 articles in 22 parts and 8 schedules. The constitution came into effect on 26th of January 1950, the day that India celebrates each year as Republic Day. It establishes the main organs, executive, legislature and judiciary and defines their powers while demarcating responsibilities and regulating their relationship. The constitution also lays down the structure of governance and the relationship between the government and the people. It spells out the rights and duties of citizens. The preamble to the constitution declares India to be a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and a welfare state committed to securing justice, liberty, equality for the people, for promoting fraternity, dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. The opening and the last sentences of the preamble, we the people adopt, enact and give to ourselves, this constitution signifies that power is ultimately vested in the hands of the people. Independent India inherited an impervish land from the clutches of British colonialism. Over the years, we progressed from famished deprivation to food surplus status. Infrastructure was created over the territory for the benefit of the people. Each constitution has a method for alteration that allows its provisions to be changed by expansion, rectification or revision to suit changing circumstances. The framers of our constitution were aware that changes would be needed from time to time. They made provisions to amend the constitution to overcome future challenges. Avoiding extreme rigidity, the authors of the constitution opted for a flexible constitution to allow it to develop in step with the developing nations and change with the changing needs of the people. The Indian Constitution was enforced in 1950. The very next year, the First Amendment was introduced. As per Article 368, the procedure for the amendment of the Indian Constitution may be initiated only by the introduction of a relevant bill in either House of Parliament and not in the State Legislature. The bill does not require prior permission of the President for introduction in Parliament. It can be moved by a Minister or a private member. Each House must pass the bill by special majority. That means the majority of the total membership of the House and the majority of two-thirds of members of the House present and voting. Each House must pass the bill separately. If the bill seeks to amend the federal feature of the Constitution, it must be ratified by half of the state legislatures with a simple majority. After duly passed by both houses and ratified by the states, the bill is presented for presidential assent. The president can neither withhold nor return the bill for reconsideration of parliament. After the presidential assent, the bill becomes an act. At the time of independence, when India was still struggling to find its geography of unity, it was left to an outstanding individual to shoulder the gigantic task of shaping the edifice of the nation. With an indomitable spirit and relentless effort, Sardar Vallabhai Patel integrated hundreds of diverse states into the modern nation-state of India. The Indian Independence Act of 1947 sealed the long-cherished dream of freedom. However, massive obstacles lay ahead. At the time of independence, India consisted of several British Indian provinces and princely states that made up about two-fifths of the geographical territory of the country. While the Indian Independence Act gave the Indian government control over British India, 
rulers of princely states were given the option to decide if they wanted to accede to India or Pakistan. Sardar Patel ensured that princely states were given a smooth entry and integrated into the Union of India. Today we'll take a closer look at the Constitution, 7th Amendment Act of 1956, which restructured the constitutional framework for India's existing states and paved way to pass the States Reorganization Act of 1956 under the provisions of the Constitution of India. All the boundaries of Indian states have been changed since 1956, but the States Reorganization Act of 1956 remains the most extensive change in the state boundaries after India's independence. Under Article 3 of the Indian Constitution, Parliament passed the States Reorganization Act 1956 to put into motion and redefine the territories of the states. Several states were enlarged by adding districts. The redefining of boundaries of the states was not solely on a linguistic basis. Regional and cultural and imbalances were also looked at to transform the boundaries of the disjointed princely states into new states. India became independent in 1947 and the constitution of India came into force on 26th of January 1950. It declared India a sovereign democratic republic. Article 1 of the constitution declared that India, that is Bharat, shall be union of states. The states and other territories were specified in the first schedule of the constitution. Prior to independence, India had two types of territories, that is the provinces of British India, which were ruled by Britishers, through governor general and Indian states ruled by rulers to whom we called princely states. The British provinces had elected a legislature and smaller provinces were governed by the chief commissioner appointed by the governor general. In so far as princely states were concerned, which were more than 500 in number, were given freedom to accede to India. The States Reorganization Commission was formed in 1953 to define the boundaries of Indian states and UTs. There were four distinct state kinds at the time of the ratification of the constitution, parts A, B, C and D. The State Reorganization Commission created Indian states by considering regional languages, monetary, industrial and governmental administration. Historical events and conditions primarily gave rise to the Indian states. Since then, more reasonable governmental changes have been increasingly necessary. In 1951, India had 27 states divided into four parts. Party. Under this, former governors' provinces of British India were listed under the class. This included Bihar, Assam, Bombay, Madras, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Punjab, West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh. In Part B, there were former princely or unions of princely states. The President of India appointed the Raj Pramukh. These included Rajasthan, Saurashtra, Mysore, Patiala, East Punjab, Hyderabad, Jammu and Kashmir, Madhya Bharat and Travancore, Cochin. Part C included a few princely states and former chief commissioners provinces. This included Bhopal, Ajmer, Tripura, Vindhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Delhi, Bilaspur, Kurg, Kutch and Manipur. And in Part D, there was Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Seventh Amendment of the Constitution was necessitated to implement the recommendation of the State Reorganization Commission regarding the reorganizations of the states on linguistic basis. It also paved the way for doing away with the classification of the states in category A, B, C and D and the newly introduced system of states and union territory was introduced by amending Schedule 1 of the Constitution of India. The areas and boundaries pertaining to the states and union territories which were present in the first schedule 
of the constitution were completely revised by this amendment to reflect the changes brought in by the reorganization scheme of the states as many as 20 articles of the constitution were amended by uh, this uh, constitution amendment it also inserted as many as eight uh, new articles in the constitution and it also amended schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 4 and schedule 7 of the constitution the state's reorganization commission submitted a report on september 30th 1955 its recommendations were debated by Indian Parliament. Subsequently, bills were passed to make changes to the constitution and administer the reorganization of the states. Another act also came into effect on 1st November, transferring certain territories from Bihar to West Bengal. Andhra state was the first state of independent India. Andhra Pradesh was formed on 1st of November, 1956. The states formed under the reorganization plan were Andhra Pradesh by merging the Telugu-speaking regions of Hyderabad. The state of Assam was further bifurcated into Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Nagaland, Meghalaya in subsequent years. Bihar was reduced by transferring small territories to West Bengal. The districts from the southernmost part of Bombay Presidency were transferred to Mysore state. However, the Bombay state was expanded by adding the Marathi-speaking region of the Birar division and Nagpur division of the central provinces and Birar. The Saurashtra state, Kutch state, and Maratwara region of Hyderabad state were also added. In 1956, no boundary changes were observed for Jammu and Kashmir. The Kerala state was formed by merging Travancore Cochin state with Malapar district and Kasargod Taluk of South Kanra district of the Madras province. Madhya Pradesh was expanded by merging Madhya Bharat, Vindhya Pradesh and Bhopal state. Marathi speaking districts were transferred to Bombay state from Nagpur division. The Madras state was expanded by adding Sengotai Taluk, Kanyakumari district, and the southern parts of Travancore Cochin. Also, the Malabar district of the state was transferred to the new Kerala state. Mysore was enlarged by adding Kurd state. The Kannada speaking regions of Western Madras Presidency, Southern Bombay Presidency, and Western Hyderabad state were also added to Mysore state. No boundaries were changed for Orissa. Patiala and East Punjab states were added to Punjab to enlarge it. Ajmer state, parts of Bombay and Madhya Pradesh states were added to Rajasthan. No changes were made to the boundaries of Uttar Pradesh in 1956. And Purulia district of Old Bihar was added to West Bengal. The constitution is the supreme law of the sovereign nation. It lays down the rule of law that is same for everyone and is not arbitrary or vague. It implies that no one is above the law. The country has modernized in every field be it entertainment, education, sports, technology, ever since it has achieved freedom. In no small way, the credit goes to the constitution makers in making India a unique and uniform platform for modernization and civilization. Well, viewers, that's all we had for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Goodbye for now from my side.